G'day everyone, welcome to Next Level Church Online. Hey, we're just so glad that you're joining in with us today, no matter where you are, no matter when you're watching this. Our prayer and our desire is, is that you'll feel God's love, that you'll feel God's grace, and that through these messages, you'll just realize that there is more for your life. That God has so much more in store for you, more than you could ever dream, more than you could even ask of Him, more than you could even imagine or think. God has more for you. And, and our prayer and desire is that you'll take steps of faith to go to the next level in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Well, today we have a special guest um, bringing the message to us today, Pastor Linda Hammond. She's gonna be sharing just an incredible word into our lives, into the life of us as a church. And so I pray that this will encourage you, it'll challenge you to keep growing and growing and going to the next level in your relationship with Jesus. Hey, be blessed by this message. Look forward to talking to you real soon. Good morning, Next Level Church, Bill Wheeler. So glad we could be with you today. Thank you, Pastor Nigel and Nicole, for inviting us to come and share, and I trust that what we bring will be an encouragement to you. Do you know, we live in a world that is just captivated by the idea of being successful, and constantly we're bombarded with images and messages on what that looks like and what it means. You know, we turn on our TVs and there's beautiful homes and beautiful gardens, beautiful clothes, beautiful people. And then we go to social media and everyone, of course, puts up their best moments and uh, edits, edits things. So we can be really kind of challenged by that and it can be very intimidating and it can be very discouraging when perhaps we feel that we don't live up to the standard. And I want to share this morning about, about what we have, however small it might be, is precious and is worth investing. I've entitled this message, One Bag of Silver. Let me read a story about the one bag of silver. It's found in Matthew 25, verses 14 to 29. Now Jesus said again, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. He called together his servants and entrusted his money to them, his money to them, while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one man, two bags of silver to another, and one bag of silver to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. He knew what they were capable of. He then left on his trip. The servant who received five bags of silver began to invest the money and earned five more. The servant who had two bags did the same thing and he earned two bags more. But the servant who received one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground and hid the master's money. After a long time, their master returned from his trip and he called them back to give account on how they'd invested the money. The servant to whom he had entrusted five bags said, Look, I invested it and I've got five more bags. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant, he said. You've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I will give you many more responsibilities. Come, let's celebrate together. Then, of course, the man with the two bags did the same thing. He got two more and the master was equally pleased with him and gave him more responsibility. But then the servant with the one bag of silver, he came and he said, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, harvesting crops you didn't plant, gathering crops you didn't cultivate. But here's the real reason. I was afraid I would lose your money. So I hid it in the earth. Look, here is your money. You can take it back. Well, the master was as cranky as anything. He said, this is wrong. You wicked and lazy, you should have at least put it in the bank to earn interest. And he took that one bag of silver off that man and gave it to the guy with the 10 bags of silver. I wanna talk a little bit about this. The first thing I wanna say is, we are stewards, not owners, of the things we have in our life. Whether it be talents, abilities, property, money, our very lives are all gifts of God and we are stewards of those things. And so that's the first thing. We are stewards of what, who we are and what we have. We don't own it. 
The second thing I want to say is we are only responsible for what we have, not for what we don't have. God is never putting demands on us more than we can handle. Remember, he gave it according to their ability. He only asked the man with the one bag of silver to work with one bag of silver. It was actually the right amount for him. It was enough and it was precious. The third thing I want to say is comparison is a trap. I've got a theory about this man with the one bag of silver. I think that when he saw his teammates with more, he thought, mine isn't good enough, it's not enough, I'll hide it. Maybe he thought, I've only got one bag, I can't afford to risk it. It was fear-based, it was comparison-based. And I think sometimes when we look around the world and we see what everyone says is successful and we think, you know, who I am, what I have, what I can do is not enough. And so we bury it, we hide it away. At least I think that's a temptation. Let me tell you about my mother. My mother is 82. She has um, poor health. She has a little living room. And she's not a very confident woman, although she ought to be. She's not a confident woman. But what she's done, she saw a need. And she thought, you know, I'm going to invite people for morning tea every fortnight. So she invited her neighbours, people in her street, people in her church, people in the community that she knew. And every second Tuesday, she has morning tea at her house. They have morning tea, they chat, they might watch a DVD or a YouTube clip. They might, they talk about all manner of things. At that group, there are people who love Jesus and there are people who don't yet know him, but they love coming to mum's home. And last week she had the same thing happen and she had an extra lady, a lady that lived around the back of her house that a friend knew had come. And they were able to encourage and love and she's created this great environment where ministry and love can flow. And I'm really proud of my mum. She could have said, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old. I'm not very energetic. My house isn't big. I don't think this is my job to do. But she didn't. She pulled out what she had, her little living room, her time and what energy she has and she invested it and now it is growing. And I just love that story about my mum. Let me move on to another story. It's a story of a widow. And this story is found in Mark 12, 41 to 44. And I always love imagining um, what it would have felt like for this, this woman in this moment. It says, Jesus sat down near the collection box in the temple and he watched as the crowds dropped in their money. Many rich people put in large amounts. Then a poor widow came and dropped in two small coins. Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I tell you the truth, this poor widow has given more than all the others who are making contributions, for they gave a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she had to live on. I often think about this woman, you know, like it was a man's world. She was a woman that was, that already she's relegated to a lower class of humanity. She was a widow that put her in a very vulnerable position. She didn't have very many means to earn money at all. Let's say two small coins, the smallest coin we have here in Australia is five cents. So she put in 10 cents in that collection box in front of all the other people. I think it would have taken courage and faith an immense love for that woman to step forward in that crowd and bring her small offering. And you know, sometimes what we think we have to bring to our community, to our church, costs us a lot. It costs us our time, it costs us our energy, it costs us courage. And sometimes we feel intimidated about the people around us who seem to have it all together, who seem to have so much more to bring. And so we hide what we have. Imagine if that widow had said that morning, you know, I can't do this. I can't, I can't step forward with my 10 cents. It's just too humiliating. But she was humble enough and courageous enough to step forward and bring her offering. I don't know what it is that you have to bring to church life, to your community, to your home. I don't know what it is, 
but I do know it is enough. And if you bring it in faith, even if it feels like you're giving it in weakness, Jesus sees it and he says, you know what, that's worth more than all these multi-talented great people. Let me encourage you today to bring what you have, invest it, don't hide it, don't deny it, don't bury it, but bring it forward and let it be a blessing to the people in your world. I just love the story of that widow and I can imagine what it felt like. Do you know, the world weighs our contributions by volume. Heaven weighs our contribution by intent. And there's this lovely saying, I just love it. It's as if only the best birds sang, the forest will be silent. It takes all of us. It takes all of our contributions. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 talks very much about this. You know, it says, if the hand was to say, I'm not an eye, therefore I don't belong. Where would the, you know, where would, how would it work? Every contribution that we can bring is worth so much. And as we invest it, as we're faithful with that little amount that we can do, God will increase it. We will grow. We will find ourselves moving to the next level of responsibility, the next level of fruitful living, the next level of influence. As we step out and do what we can, it's going to matter and it's going to touch someone's life. It always amazes me the smallest thing um, that we can do. I remember years ago in Pittsworth, our neighbour was sick and I just made some pumpkin soup and took it around. It was just seemed like a simple thing. It was all I could do. And as I handed it over, she teared up in her eyes. Do you know, little things done with kindness are incredibly powerful in people's lives. Kindness, that's something you can bring. It doesn't take much. I want to say this to you. How do you feel? Do you feel unworthy? Do you feel too small, not strong enough? Do you feel like you've got only got two cents and it's just not enough? You only have one bag of silver and it's not enough. Give it anyway. It is the pathway to growth. The man with the one bag of silver lost his opportunity through fear. He just buried it. He lost his opportunity. Imagine if he had have invested that one bag of silver, he would have had two bags of silver. And then Jesus would have said, here, I'll give you four bags of silver. I'll give you more responsibility. Just imagine what will happen if you say about that one thing that you can bring, whether it's just a little bit of time, whether it's a cup of tea or coffee with somebody, whether it's just, I don't know, just your, your prayer. Imagine if you invest that one thing you can do. Imagine if you were to come and say to Pastor Nigel and Nicole, hey, you know, I can, I can give one hour a week. What would you like me to do? Imagine what would happen. Just imagine, because I guarantee this, more, more would come. It would grow and you would grow. The widow caught the eye and the heart of Jesus. And as we step out, even if it feels like it's not enough, it catches the eye and the heart of Jesus. And he sees it, he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Let's celebrate together. Here's some more and see what you can do with that. You know, the little boy with that lunch, five loaves and two fish was not enough. It was insufficient, but he gave it anyway and it fed 5,000 people. The widow of Zarephath, remember the prophet came to her and said, can you give me your last meal? It was a famine. She was making that meal for herself and her son and they were just going to eat it and die. That meal was insufficient. But as she gave it, small as it was, it kept them alive all the way through the famine. I think of the prophet's widow. She again found herself in deep trouble. She had huge debt. Her husband had died and her son was going to be taken from her as a slave. She came to the prophet and said, what do I do? He said, what have you got in your house? Oh, all I've got is a little bit of oil. He said, it's enough. Go and borrow every vessel you can, pour in the oil. And as she gave that insufficient amount, it grew and she was able to clear her debt, rescue her son and go on living a happy life. Give what you have. It is enough. Don't be embarrassed. 
Don't look around and compare yourself with all those that seem to have so much. I guarantee you they're thinking the same kind of things you are. I haven't got enough. I'm not good enough. Just give it anyway. This is a church. Bill Oil and Next Level Church is committed to moving to the next level. The next level of love for Jesus. The next level of love for each other. The next level of love and influence in Biloela, in your community. And I guarantee you, as you give what you have, even though it seems insufficient, I guarantee you God will multiply and you will find your influence and, and the power of the gospel spreading and growing throughout this community. But this will never happen, never happen, if you hide that talent, if you hide your one bag of silver, it won't happen. If you say, you know, it's not good enough, I haven't got enough, I haven't got enough time, I haven't got enough energy, I haven't got enough skill, I've only got this little bit and it certainly isn't going to help. If you bury that, there will be no next level. But if you give it, there will be. Let me encourage you that what you have really matters. Put it in the hands of Jesus. Step out in faith. Have that conversation with Pastor Nigel and Nicole. Say, what can I do? You know, spend that time praying. 10 minutes a day praying for your church, praying for your community, praying for your chaplains, praying for your pastors, praying for your neighbours can turn things around. I know that as you do this, God will say, well done. Let's celebrate together and here is more. Let me pray. Father, I thank you for Biloela. I thank you for Next Level Church. I thank you for this beautiful group of people who love you so much. I pray, Lord, that you will break every sense of fear and intimidation and comparison. And each person will bring the contribution that they can, will invest their gift, their talent, their time, their money, their energy, whatever they have available into your kingdom and Lord as they do the great joy will fill their lives their confidence will grow their influence will grow and your work in this town will grow I thank you for this now in Jesus name amen thanks so much everybody I trust that it's been a blessing and an encouragement to you bye bye <music>